Today I'll cover my list of favorite tips for Windows 10 that can really make a difference for you. Some of these are new, some have been there for a while, but they're a bit hidden. Let's take a look. Number one, multitasking in Edge. Most of us have multiple applications open at the same time when we're working. Now, the fastest way in Windows to switch between these apps is to use the shortcut Alt-Tab. But this handy shortcut only worked for apps, not for the many tabs we usually have open in our internet browser. That's changed now. When you press Alt-Tab with Edge open, you'll see your browser tabs right alongside your other apps in the task switcher. So these three tabs are tabs I have open in Edge, and these two are other apps. That's so convenient because this way I can quickly jump to a specific tab in Edge. There are also some settings to customize your experience. Click on Windows Start button, Settings. Then click on System and select Multitasking. With this setting right here, you can choose whether to show all or to only show your last three or five browser tabs so that you don't overload the task switcher. With the last option, Open Windows Only, you can turn off this feature in case you can't get used to it. But I'm pretty sure you'll love it. Number two, turn on the turbo. Now, not many know of this. Windows 10 has a performance mode that you can turn on to make sure that your hardware is running at peak performance. This is Windows Ludicrous mode. But most people will actually never see it because it's only enabled by default for workstations. So let me show you how you can enable it. Click on the Windows Start button and select Settings. Then click on System and then Power and Sleep. On the right here, you'll see additional power settings which will take you to the power options. Usually you'll see these power plans, Balanced, Power Saver, and High Performance. The one we're looking for is not here, so let's activate it. Click on the Windows Start button and type in command prompt. Then type in this command. Now I put the command in the description of the video, so just copy it from there. Then hit enter, and that's it. Let's close the window and go back to the power and sleep and to the additional power settings. And now we can enable the ultimate performance plan. This mode will essentially disable all power savings features in exchange for best possible performance. Now, I don't recommend using this all the time because it will prioritize performance over energy efficiency. But for projects when you want to use the additional juice, it may come in handy. And you can always change back to the balance plan afterwards. Number three, clean up the clutter. Next tip is about freeing space on your hard drive. Now, with a Windows feature called Storage Sense, you can automatically get rid of temporary or unnecessary files. Now, what I especially like about it is that it also works with OneDrive. So it looks through your locally available files in OneDrive and moves them to online only if you haven't opened them for a certain time frame. This way, you can release a lot of space locally while your files are safe in the cloud. Let me show you. Click the Windows button and type in Storage Settings. Up here, you can turn on Storage Sense. Then you can configure it to your needs. Per default, Storage Sense only runs if you're low on disk space. Now, I recommend changing this to run at least every month. Then you decide how to handle temporary files. I usually have this option checked, and I also delete files in the Recycle bin after 30 days. The Downloads folder is not turned on by default. It's up to you. You can change it, but I'm sometimes slow to move stuff around from there, so I generally have it on Never. Down here, under Locally Available Cloud Content, you can free up space by moving your files to just online and not local on your device. You'll see the list of your SharePoint and OneDrive folders that your PC is linked to. When you click on the dropdown, you can select a time interval. For example, with 14 days, it would move files that you didn't open for the last 14 days to online only. This means they're still available to you. You can see them on your drive. You can double click anytime and open these, but they don't take up any space. When you're done, click Clean Now and let Windows clean up the clutter for you. 
Number four, the Your Phone app. This app has been around for a while, but not many know of it. It lets you use your phone without touching it. For example, you can read and send text messages from the comfort of your PC, or send messages with WhatsApp or any other messaging app, which is a productivity boost for me because I'm much faster typing on the keyboard than with my thumbs. With the app, you also get instant access to your photos. You can just drag and drop them into other Office apps and start using them in, for example, PowerPoint, Word, or OneNote. You essentially get access to all of your apps on your phone. Plus, you can make and receive calls on your PC. At the moment, it's exclusive to Samsung devices, but hopefully Microsoft is going to make this available to other Android devices. Now, I have a separate video about the Your Phone app. Check it out if you want to find out more about it. I'll put the link in the description below. Number five, turn off background apps. Each app that's running in the background is draining your battery and making your computer slower. Now, background apps can continue to perform actions even when you don't have them open. It may make sense for some apps to update in the background, like your email and your calendar or the weather app, but for most of them, it's not necessary. And just to be clear, preventing an app from running in the background doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means it won't be running in the background when you're not using it. To change the settings, click on the Start button. Go to Settings, select Privacy, and then scroll down to Background Apps. You can either turn off background apps completely up here, or you can scroll down the list of apps and disable each depending on what you want. And while we're in here, also check out all the other privacy settings you have under Apps and Windows Permissions. For example, which apps can access your camera, your microphone, and so on. Or in Activity History, double check your options about what's being recorded and shared with Microsoft regarding your usage of apps and services. Just go through and think about which data you want to share and which permissions you want to give to apps because most of it is going to be turned on by default, which may not be in your interest. Now, I hope these tips will be helpful to get the most out of Windows 10. In case you're interested in additional tips, check out this video to uncover some more useful features for Windows 10. As always, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing if you want to see more tutorials like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.